After learning a little bit about the thylacine, or what's commonly known as the Tasmanian tiger, should we bring it back if we could? Every specimen, like these extinct little potteroos or rat kangaroos, is filled with critical information about our world and the state of our environment. Joe, I think we could have such uh, an interesting debate on whether or not you should bring back animals that have become extinct. You know, I know they've talked about mammoths, for example, but in this one, what about the thylacine? I'll give you my verdict in a minute. The kinds of questions and puzzles are enormous. If you want to understand what was this species? What was it related to? What did it eat? Where did it live? Why did it go extinct? All those kinds of questions you need to get access to the specimen itself. Maybe we can study its DNA. Maybe we can study this chemistry of its skin and reconstruct what it ate. Those types of marvelous things that we can do with modern science. So only by looking after these specimens in these cabinets do we really kind of end that chaos and bring some order and organization to our understanding of life on Earth. And it is certainly so spot on about how modern science is incredible. If we're looking at, at finding, finding out and exploring the genome, wow, some of the things they've done. Um, cloning a sheep, for example, and but it, it brings up a lot of ethical issues as well, doesn't it? Especially when we talk about humans and, and what they could do to the human body to make it better. Um, I think it's fascinating and, and it's incredible. And these people that are working on, on the genome, they should be applauded and they are incredible people. And it's never been more important. Australia has the worst record of mammal extinction on the planet Wow. With 50 animal species lost since the museum started collecting specimens in the 1860s. None more famous than the one I'm dying to see, the thylacine or Tasmanian tiger. You've got more than one. Yeah, we do. And some of them are just absolute stunners. So I always get a bit sad when I yeah. look into this cabinet. I know, we're yeah. Reflecting on something that is no longer with us. Yeah, it's sort of bittersweet because it's exciting because it's such a famous extinct animal in Australia and yeah. the world. So it's exciting to see it, but yeah, it's also bittersweet it's still not with us. Absolutely. In September 1936, only two months after the species was granted protected status, the last known individual died. I did mention in the previous video about thylacine how um, I found out that this last one got locked out of its its pen. I think died from the cold or something. Once again, correct me if I'm wrong. It's 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 very sad when these creatures go extinct. Um, it's not always humans' fault. Sometimes it is. It's not always humans' fault. Sometimes it's that whole survival of the fittest, but. You do feel that humans have, have not helped the situation. We always kind of look yeah. at the tag to tell the story. And, yeah, uh, what you know, year were you looking at there? This one, it says, uh, came to the museum August 14th, 1890. Oh, wow. This is a specimen of a thylacine yeah. that's never been on display. It's only wow. ever been carefully curated outside of the light in a climate controlled area here behind the scenes in the museum. So, so that specimen, is about 130 years old-ish and look at the condition that they have kept it in. Uh, incredible. Okay. And it shows that kind of rich uh, gray-brown color and the, the dark yeah. stripes, uh, just a much more richly colored animal than most people imagine. These furry remains could pleasant. contain even more scientific insights. But Chris is keen for me to see a special specimen preserved in a very different way. This is our famous little thylacine pup. Oh, that? Would it be called a pup? 
Would it not be called a joey because we've learned that that they're marsupials or were marsupials, and therefore would they not be called joeys instead of pups? Because surely pups is a a dog species, and they're not dogs. He is outstanding. That's crazy. Still got all the the little hairs. This would have to be the most famous specimen in the wet collection, is that fair? I think it might be. It has kind of an iconic status. It's this heartbreaking picture of a well-developed thylacine pup, and it's preserved entirely intact. I don't know if you're watching this behind the screen or in front of the screen. This is really sad, actually. I'm... I don't know if it's the, the cold winter coming in and getting goosebumps, but seeing this, they called as a pup, um, I think it's just so sad. Sort of seeing that lifeless body that's probably been there for a long time in such good condition, but thinking about their demise. Stored wet in an alcohol solution, scientists have access to the entire animal, every part of its anatomy, and even its genomic sequence. So I have to ask you, can you get DNA from this? Yeah, you can get DNA. Because it was preserved in ethanol and not uh, in formaldehyde or formalin like many of our other specimens, it's actually a pretty good source of DNA. Now you probably get annoyed being asked this, but could the thylacine be brought back to life? Okay, that was the that was the the question of the title of the video, and I want to answer this what I think. So I think yes, it could sort of be brought back to life, um, but should it? Write what you think down below in the comments while you're down there. Subscribe. I'm gonna say no it shouldn't be brought back for a, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that you have to have, now this is sort of learning from the whole mammoth elephant situation. You have to have a very similar relative of that animal quite often because you insert the egg in it and, and you know, not sorry, you insert the, the, can't think what the term is but when you get an egg from say an elephant you then insert the genes for it to something along those lines I know what I'm talking about but you have to have a close relative and I don't think there is any close enough relative for the thylacine um, that to make that possible I hope that makes sense um, but also Actually, will it really be the same animal? Will it learn the same behaviours if you did? Because if there are no other thylacines, how does it learn? How does it become the thylacine that, that we knew? I don't think it's possible because, once again, you haven't got the animals around it that are similar enough in, in, in the genes and behaviours that are gonna support that animal. So should it be brought back to life? No. I sometimes think if, if an animal's gone extinct, then it's probably gone extinct for a reason. A lot of people have that question. It's really one of the main things people wanna know about the thylacine. And to me, the answer is always going to be no. And one of the reasons is that the thylacine is such a uh, isolated type of mammal on the family tree. You might think, well, maybe it's related to Tasmanian devils or quolls or other carnivorous marsupials. It is, but only very distantly, in the same way that a dog is sort of related to a cat. So a very, very, very distant relative. And without a close relative, you're lacking basically almost all the tools you need as a biologist to ever have a chance of bringing this back. And if you brought it back, you could have a thylacine plague. <laughs> two, which would be, which would be, be annoying, many, wouldn't it? Too many thylacines. You bring them back and then there's two. They're many. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating stuff. Uh, incredible work. Honestly, incredible work. Um, let's find a nice shot to finish. No, no. Let's 
There you go. That that shot will do. No, that shot will do. Um, it's it's I said it's an interesting topic, and I'm sure it can be debated, and people will have their their opinions. Yes, certain animals, and it's not just talking about the thylacine. It's talking about mammoths, the dodo. You know, these extinct animals should they be brought back if we have access to their genome? No, in my opinion, no, because. There's a reason why they went extinct, because normally because they couldn't cope with the current surroundings. It's tough. It's horrible. And we need to protect the animals that are still around to try and stop them going extinct in the first place. I hope you found that interesting. I found that absolutely brilliant. That was so interesting. And it's nice to see Tom Gleason in a different light rather than just the hard hitting comedy. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe and I will catch you next time.